Hey guys, it's Matthew Zachary, and I want to tell you about the National Comprehensive Cancer Network, or the NCCN. The NCCN creates the treatment guidelines for doctors that help cancer patients lead better lives. But I want you to know that the NCCN also has guidelines for you. The patient guidelines were funded by the NCCN Foundation and were created just for people with cancer and their caregivers. They're free, they're easy to understand, and they're available right now for you, the patient and the caregiver. So go check them out at nccn.org slash empower. That's nccn.org slash empower. Everybody, I'm Joey Brenneman from Offscript Health. Welcome to the tangential conversation companion to Offscript Health's Before We Die podcast. We fondly named these mini episodes Lab Before Slab. And these are the sometimes random, often fascinating, and always a little bit quirky conversations that happen around our production table. We couldn't quite fit them into our regular episodes, but we had a feeling that there are listeners out there who might enjoy them. So here are the Before We Die creators, Sandra Miller, John McMahon, and Craig Allman to geek out about the latest happenings in the medtech arena. All right, so today's topic is what? John, go. Thank you, Joey. So I read an article this past week, and it had a sentence. It opened a great you know, grabbing sentence. It says, quote, if you could take a pill to get the benefits of exercise, would that be the end of your fitness regime? Yes. <laughs> 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 All right, so <laughs> next episode, okay, please. <laughs> now we have to wrap, wrap this up. We're done. <laughs> next topic. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Well, but, um, yeah, let's see what else. I got my other pocket here. First topic. So these group of scientists at Baylor and, and Stanford, places that I, I admire, and they, they're looking at finding this metabolic signature there's two things that goes on. One, it keeps you from getting hungry. So that's like, does it want to address obesity? And then, you know, you can lower your body fat and improve your glucose. All those are like, sounds like good positive things. And then they went and did it in exercise. They're like, okay, is the human body doing it? So they give it to mice and they just basically get fitter. They eat less, they're more lean. So to me, the thing that really came back to it, this idea of an exercise pill or an obesity pill is, well, wait a minute, you're going to take something to stop taking the other stuff you take. What do you mean the other stuff? Well, like I'm going to take a pill that's going to keep me from eating a half gallon of ice cream. I'm like, well, wait a minute, you're 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 taking something to stop you from taking something or I don't want to exercise. So I'm going to take a pill it just, I know that's what everybody wants a pill, but to me, the idea but here's what, here's what I think is the difference between mice and people. Like if you're going to take, <laughs> if you're going to take a, There's if you're going to take a pill, they're going to take a pill to keep them from getting hungry. We can't, we don't eat a gallon of ice cream because we're hungry. We eat a gallon of ice cream because we're bored or we have emotional, you know, like we're upset about something or we're lonely. You know, I, I wonder if the pill took that into account. I mean, not, not that this is from personal experience or anything. <laughs> okay, so that's a really good point. So so doing medical devices in obesity is a, a part of the expression, a huge market. It, the, the aspects of it are, is they're really poorly compliant patients. And I think you hit on it because it, it's an emotional side or there's other things that are driving them to eat other than the fact that they like, why did you do that? Right. So in the device field and the drug field, they actually don't take their drugs or use their devices appropriately because the, uh, to a large degree, the underlying issue is not necessarily that piece. I have thoughts. Yes. I have thoughts. I have so many thoughts on this. So this may be a very long, <laughs> long segment. <laughs> OK, we're, we're ready. 
John and I have a uh, a friend in common who is a very prolific medical device inventor, also a physician, and he's invented uh, he's he has um, medical device startup companies in many different sort of clinical areas. One of the areas that he and I have talked about are medical device solutions for weight loss, and he hasn't gone there. Um, he is specifically as he looked at it, he's like. It is just such a hard problem to solve the medical device that at the end of the day, the best solution is almost to cut off the patient's head because your your head, it's it's it weighs a lot, (laughs) (laughs) you know, it's more than just sort of the anatomy. And it is it's, it's an incredibly complex problem. And so, John, I think. You know, I understand, you know, your your initial sort of reaction to it. It's like, this is just not a good idea to have something that would take away, quote, people's motivation to exercise. But I would frame it a different way. And I'll use an example of an electric bicycle. So I have never really liked bicycling. And so I've avoided it. It's just because it's like too hard. But I got an electric bike. I went down to Santa Barbara and I tried it for the first time. And I was enjoying riding the electric bike along the beautiful beach and everything. I'm like, this makes it easy enough to where I'm out there exercising and on the bike. And so I went home and bought one and I love it. And it gets me out on the bike. And so I think something like this pill, you can think about people who do want to exercise more. And if there's something that can help them make that a little easier, that I think is a huge step towards people improving their health. The COVID-19 pandemic showed us how a microscopic virus could upend our lives and how unprepared our society was for it. There's so much more out there that we need to understand, which is why I recommend subscribing to Crooked Media's America Dissected, hosted by former Detroit Health Commissioner, Dr. Abdul El-Sayed. Each week, Dr. El-Sayed sits down with doctors, scientists, culture makers, and policy leaders to ask questions like, how could new genetic discoveries change our relationship with our own genes? How could addiction to social media change our brains? Or how even climate change could make the next major pandemic more likely? To hear discussions on these topics and more, check out America Dissected from Crooked Media. New episodes drop every Tuesday. Listen on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Yeah, I think if there were a pill that gave you all the benefits of exercise, there would still be people exercising, probably exactly the same number, because no pill could give you the joy and satisfaction uh, of feeling superior to all the people you were running past. <laughs> uh, so I don't think Run it like really. The wind. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't think it really matters. Um, you know, the desire to eat, uh, the need to fulfill your impulse for satisfying your pleasure. Uh, is really intense, and it is not a conscious drive. (laughs) Where are we going with this, Greg? I'm saying that if you could have a drug that controls that without too many side effects, that's a very good thing. Yeah. And it's not something that's easily managed by willpower or long managed by willpower. And there's not many drugs that are very effective for it. And I think you have a romantic notion about people's neurochemistry. What do you mean? So there. <laughs> oh uh, well, it, it's it's just amazing how I, I have a romantic notion about your neurochemistry. I think I'm going to use that line the whole time. <laughs> it's a question of what makes you right. Yeah, and you true. can really easily manipulate your neurochemistry. You could be, you know, lustful or completely uninterested in sex. You could be really driven or completely uh, anodyne and lazy. You can. 
all of this stuff is manipulatable through chemistry. And then that, <laughs> that becomes a question of then who are you? Right. Are you just a, a random set of circumstances that are affecting your drives, which is affecting your self-definition? And that's certainly true in terms of hunger and your desire to exercise or not exercise. All of this is malleable, just as the brain is increasingly being understood as being very malleable. Not to touch on a personal point, Craig, but if I had a pill that would make you not afraid of bears, <laughs> would you come and visit? John, don't take it personally, but I'm not so sure that's the reason that Craig is not coming to visit you. But. <laughs> I do think we should um, note that John has a special bear friend around his house. That I don't, John, I don't know why, what you're doing to continue to have this relationship with the bear, but I'm starting to get concerned. It's not a bear. It's a family of bears, some of them not as large as me, but almost some of them much larger than me. Yes. And yes. they're hungry and they like to visit his backyard and he's got a camera oh. which takes pictures of them automatically and they don't seem that friendly. No, one of them's actually gotten very good at selfies. One of them is yeah. actually ends up getting really good pictures of, of himself. So one of them's really getting into the groove out there. All right, I'm, I'm going to take this back for a second. Right? <laughs> Since we've gotten largely off topic here, go for it. <laughs> so what I, what I really like about this article personally then was I started off with this opinion. And we've shared sort of this perspective. And it hits a chord, right? Because mm -hmm. this is a big part of people's identity and their health and the longevity and fitness, right? So everybody has these aspects about it. So I keep reading the article. I start off sort of judgmental. Then I get to a section where they did these same tests looking for this protein to be mm -hmm. produced when people exercised. So now as somebody that, that used to like to run and you on still? occasion do stuff outside <laughs> and maybe compete, then the article got like, oh, wait a minute. Now it's a pill mm -hmm. that will improve your exercise, right? So now my personality is like, ooh. Hey, wait a minute. Can I get a box of these? So sort of even in one article on healthcare, I sort of ebbed and flowed in the perspectives of what I would do with the same thing, right? So we would talk about if you walked up to somebody when I was doing marathons, you walked up to somebody in a marathon, you could tell them, hey, you'll run one minute <laughs> faster if you put your shoes on your other feet. People would be like, really? Uh, I and they would just totally do it at the last minute, right? So the susceptibility to find something, like when it was presented as not exercising, I wasn't a fan of it. But then when I got to the part of the article where it's like, oh, and this could help your exercising. Yeah, know. and and just to be you know honest too, I, I definitely feel like that exercising is, some, is a use it or lose it kind of thing. It's amazing to me how often like if you're exercising and in rhythm with it, then it's good. But the minute, especially as we get older, the minute that you change your routine or you miss a couple of days and it's like, oh, my God, to get back to it again is really hard and frustrating. So I feel like that assist, I could definitely relate to that, to something that made it made it feel like, OK, yes, they can, this can get me back to where I was. I mean, it's kind of what Sandy was saying, too. Like if it could be an assist, then it would be really great. So, John, is there any um, information about when this might be available to <laughs> ourselves and our audience? You know, I, it's not clear. It's been going, the research has been going on for a long time, right? So when they get the leverage to move these forward, the press is pretty hungry for this. So it doesn't give a clear timeline on how it's available. It's an amino acid. It's known as LACFE, L-A-C, that's F-A-P, excuse me, P-H-E. Mm. And it's a byproduct of lactic acid. And so uh, it's really a, a simple protein, you know, as we understand more and more about our metabolism and, and what makes us inducive to this. Uh, but I will, uh, if I find out, we can put it in the share notes about it's available 
when it'll be available. And just so you know, as a commitment to Joey's first response, I do believe I watched her roll her rowing machine out the window <laughs> of her apartment in New York City halfway through this conversation. I'm pretty sure you got the wrong <laughs> Joey, <laughs> but we will definitely put the name of this drug in our show notes. And anyway, that's all we have time for today. But join us next time because you never know where the lab before slab conversation is going to go. And for more in-depth conversations with today's med tech innovators, join us for our regular episodes of Before We Die on this very same feed. Thanks for listening. Lab Before Slab is an Offscript Health production. The executive producers are Matthew Zachary and Andrew McDowell. Our senior producers are Joey Brenneman and Ariel Nachman. Lab Before Slab is mixed by Kyle Moore. Our Lab Before Slab panel of experts and creators of the show are Sandra Miller, John McMahon, and Craig Allman. If you like the show, ratings and reviews are always welcome. Leave us a message at 855-AUDIO-66. That's 855-283-4666. Share your healthcare stories and we might just play them on the air in a future episode. For more information, visit offscript.com. That's offscript, no T, dot com. <laughs>